this is the structure of the program. Um, remember, there are in, in CIPS uh, parlance, the diploma program has eight modules, two of which is uh, what is called, uh, uh, all modules are core modules, but the format is different for two modules because these are 12 credits module as compared to the rest, which are six credit module. Right? So the exam, from an exam perspective, uh, the 12 credit modules are based on what is called constructed response format, which is uh, essay question. And the six credit modules are based on objective response, which is uh, multiple choice or objective response questions. All right. The duration of the exam is also different. Objective response, that means the exam for these modules are 90 minutes. Exam for uh, M1 and M8 is uh, three hours. Right. Uh, those who have uh, taken their exams in November, the exam results for the constructed response module will be released in a couple of weeks. The exam enrollment for March is now open. So please, those who have, uh, those who are thinking of registering, you can register. Because of the COVID situation, CIPS is actually offering a discount on the remote invigilation mode of exam. So you may want to consider that. Uh, and see uh, whether you want to use remote invigilation, especially those who are under lockdown. Uh, hopefully uh, that will not happen, but if there is a fear of that happening, maybe you can use remote invigilation as a as an exam mode. <clears throat> CIPS is giving a discount for March because of COVID uh, uh, issues. Right. Uh, we are now doing M2 and M7. Right. This is a combination that we are using. The next module will be M3, M4, then M5, M6, right. and then M8. So that's, that's the structure of the program. Uh, please keep, uh, remember in Zoom, we have a number of students here. Uh, I think sometimes the attendance touches almost 50. Uh, some of you keep your mics on unmute. So please keep, uh, when you're not using the mic, keep it on mute because we don't want to hear noise in the background and we don't want to hear you talking to someone else on the phone it disturbs the participants also for example now someone has unmuted the mic please, please mute your mics yeah i don't want to remove that flexibility uh, but we are all uh, uh, adults we know how to take care of each other in terms of not disturbing the class you can always unmute and ask question or post your question on the chat box. Uh, I usually pick it up when, when I see the question on the chat box. So don't keep the mic unmuted. Keep the mic by default muted. <clears throat> and you can always unmute it if you want. I hope that is okay for everybody. Right. Uh, for those who are uh, joining for the first time, remember I take the sessions uh, for uh, ASEAN as well as international students uh, my, uh, on on a regular basis. Uh, you don't you do you don't need to write or take notes. You, you can if you want, uh, but the slides are given to you. You can make notes. Yeah, that's a good thing if you want to make notes in your printout. Please do that. Uh, that'll that'll be that'll be fine. All right. uh, but don't write anything on the slide. So I've removed the facility to annotate on the shared content. But you can make a note. No no issue. Hello. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is uh, Pavan. Uh, I'm an engineer by qualification. I did my MBA also, and I did this level six professional diploma in procurement and supply. Uh, and then I started my career as a manufacturing engineer in the automotive industry, then moved to uh, hospitality and from hospitality to a, a consulting company and then to a third party logistics company before I uh, set up or founded Advanced SCS, Advanced Supply Chain Solution, uh, which is a CIPS approved center. Uh, we have now offices in uh, Singapore. We have 
is in Bangladesh, and now we have recently set up in Vietnam. So we have advanced CS Vietnam, advanced CS Bangladesh, and uh, advanced Singapore. Right. So those are the three official locations. But we are uh, we have students from almost all parts of the world, other than the US and Far East. In terms of my academic uh, experience, I teach at the National University of Singapore, as well as at the Rutgers Business School, uh, which is a US uh, uh, based in New Jersey, USA, All right, for their MBA program and MSc program at NUS. I also teach at SUSS, uh, Singapore University of Social Sciences, and I'm a course lead for their undergraduate program, uh, Supply Chain Management Module. Uh, we'll start uh, with L4, M2, and then we'll move on to L4, M3. Generally, we take about three sessions for L4, M2, and three sessions for L4 M and the remaining L4, M7. Uh, we try to cover as much content as possible, but I have to uh, advise you, and I always advise you that uh, uh, we discuss more than what is in the topic, so there might be certain parts of the topic that you have to read on your own. So please, please make sure that you're studying once you uh, complete the classroom session, which is a online session, please go back and read the study guide uh, and kind of revise and recollect, right? revise and recollect uh, the topic that we have discussed. Uh, don't just rely on the slides, right? make sure that you also go to the study guide. We have given you the copy of the slides. We have also given you certain practice tests uh, there are about maybe 50, 60, 70 questions in the practice test. Uh, there are additional tests that you can purchase on our website. You can go to advancedscs.com and purchase more tests if you need. But we have given you enough practice uh, questions to kind of practice. But like I said, don't, don't uh, focus your preparation only on the slide. Go to the study guide also. Make sure that you study from the study guide. And have a study plan. Don't leave it to the last minute uh, for your preparation. So uh, L4M2 and the OR modules, uh, objective response format modules, usually have three chapters. And we try to cover one chapter in one session. Uh, some chapters are much, much more bigger in content, uh, maybe more content than other chapters. But we try to average it out uh, one chapter per, per session. Uh, today we are starting early because uh, as you notice, I'm in a different setting. I'm in, in New Delhi now. Uh, I'll be leaving for Singapore shortly later this evening. So I, I wanted the module to be brought forward so that I can complete this session before I leave. Right. Next week I'll be in Singapore. So chapter one, uh, chapter two and chapter three. Chapter one is about developing a business case for procurement. Uh, chapter two is market management in procurement and supply, understanding the market. And chapter three is the use of specification. Now, from a, from a procurement perspective, remember we have to understand one thing that procurement, uh, remember if you ask procurement, what do they really do? They will say that, oh, we, we, we meet the requirements of a user. All right. So there is an alignment to operational requirement. But don't forget that you also, up on over and above the operational requirement, there is a business requirement. Right? There is a business requirement. The needs of the business influence procurement. If I'm only focusing on the operational requirement, I'll focus on getting the quality, getting the quantity, getting, the, uh, getting on time for my operation, for my users. But if I align to the business needs of the organization, I have to understand what are the business needs of an organization. And one of the business need of organization is return on investment, return on investment. So I have to understand how my business needs influence procurement decision. Over, over the operational requirement, there is a business requirement. So I have to align myself to the business requirement also and focus on the cost aspect of uh, procurement rather than only the quality, quantity, time, and place, which is an operational requirement. Right. So the first chapter or this particular module focuses on 
defining the business needs and understanding the concept of cost and costing in procurement. Like I said, don't forget that sourcing commits an organization to cost. If I have a contract value for let's say $100,000, at the end of it, I have to pay $100,000. That's a cost. And there is no reason why you need to pay more when you can get it for less. Because in any organization, material cost accounts for almost 40 to 60% of the total cost. Any reduction in material cost will, will increase the return on investment for the organization. So there is no reason why you should not be focusing on cost. Right? But of course, you cannot be just focusing on cost alone. That, that's, a, that's another thing to know. Uh, you have to focus on the cost, but not entirely on the cost. Sourcing will commit you, a contract will commit you to cost and contract will commit you to liability. Right? Liability associated with fulfilling the contract and liability associated with that having that supplier. It also increases the risk. Right? It also increases the risk. The cost of procurement reduces the profitability of the company. So when we are talking about large purchases, which is complex, high value, it is always the best practice to evaluate the cost and benefits of the proposed procurement. So there is a business case. I don't want to have a business case for purchasing office supplies, which may be very low value. But if I'm, if I'm exposing my organization to a large cost, then there has to be a business case. There has to be a business case. Is the cost justifying the benefits? Or the benefits are not so much, but the cost is so much of the proposed procurement. And then present it to the stakeholder to get that buy-in. So it's like a, a marketing plan. What we are discussing here is a source plan. What we are discussing is a source plan. So a business case approach to procurement will instill that I'm not just meeting the technical requirements of the organization, I'm also meeting the business needs of the organization. And I should be looking at reducing the total cost associated with the purchase of goods, services, and works. And having a framework of business case, a business case, remember when we talk about business case, we always talk about options, we talk about cost, we talk about benefits. And we look at balancing the benefits and the costs. If the benefits are more than the cost, that's a good thing to do. Uh, if the benefits is less than the cost, you don't want to go with that particular uh, so-called option. Right? You're looking at the feasibility, you can look, you're looking at the viability of the option uh, in purchase. So th this module talks about business case. Now, what do you buy regularly? What do you buy in procurement? What are the different types of purchases? One, straight rebuy. Right? Purchases usually made from the same supplier or buying the same thing maybe from a different supplier. Utilities, MRO, raw material generally doesn't change in specification. You bought electricity in the past, you buy electricity in the future. Right? You buy maybe gas in the past, you want gas in the future. Maybe you bought oxygen in the past, you bought oxygen in the future. Right. Any any such uh, utility. Uh, maintenance, repair and operating items. Also, as long as you have the equipment, you will be continuing to buy the same spare part. Straight rebuy. You may go to the same supplier, but you may in some cases change the supplier. The second type of purchase that you carry out is a modified rebuy. Right. Modified rebuy. Modified rebuy generally happens uh, similar to state rebuy, but with some changes because there might be certain changes in technology. There might be certain changes in maybe manufacturing processes. There might be some upgrades. Right? There might be some upgrades. So you want to change the specification to incorporate the new technology, new material, new processes, and so on. And you modify that particular specification. You may end up going to the same supplier or you may go to a new supplier. Right? The third category of purchase is new buy. Right? New buy are generally associated with capital items. Remember, whenever we buy some capital item, we have not bought in the past. 
equipment, right? finished goods maybe. Uh, when we talk about retail, new buys, we launch a new line of products, which we have not done before. Right? So finished products, products for resale, which is uh, again an example from retail industry. I buy and sell the same thing. Right? So I may be buying newer and newer things, but new buy. So your types of purchase that you are rebuy, rebuy is buying again, right? rebuy. I bought in the past, I'm buying again. That is rebuy. Opposite of new buy, right? opposite of new buy. New buy is I didn't buy, I have not bought before. So it's, it's, it's new, I don't even know anything. I don't know what specifications are, I don't know nothing. Right? But in straight rebuy and modified rebuy, I have bought in the past. I'm buying again. But right. rebuy is buying again. Some is straight rebuy, some modify. Right. I can change some specification. But some things will be new buy. That means I have not bought before. This is more challenging to the purchaser because there is nothing to fall back on. There's no past record. There's no past history to, to look at. So straight rebuy, like I said, low value, low risk, generally competitive market. You don't need a lot of effort. <laughs> I bought electricity in the past. I'm buying electricity again. How much effort will it be? Routine order placement. Uh, you may have an existing contract. You just call off from that. Uh, simple in terms of procurement processes. Right. Modified rebuy, like I said, is when you have to incorporate changes to your specification. And there may be many reasons why there might be a requirement to change the specification. Maybe new technology has come in, maybe new design of uh, certain processes. So as, or maybe you want to have certain reduction in cost, so you change the specification. Now here generally more complex than straight purpose, straight uh, rebuy. So it, you will now want to review your existing specification and see that if I modify the specification to reflect any changes, is it really worthwhile? If it is not worthwhile, why invest in making any changes? So that consideration of worthwhile is a business case. I'm, I have an option to modify certain specification, but is it really useful? Will it give me any benefit? Remember, when you modify anything, you look for new supplier, you do your pre-qualification, you do your evaluation of your uh, responses, all are cost. Do you want to incur that cost when the benefit is not substantial? Mm -hmm. So modified rebuy will, will give you, uh, will require you to do business needs analysis, mm -hmm. cost and benefit analysis. You may source from alternate suppliers if the existing suppliers are not able to meet your needs, or you can go back to the existing supplier. Potentially more procurement effort, obviously. You have to do market analysis. You have to look for options. You have to look for suppliers. You have to look for new technology. You have to look for new, maybe if I'm doing packaging material, new processes in your specification. So your, your effort will be much more than straight rebuy. That really doesn't need much effort. So you can, you can have a lot of sourcing strategy. What are we buying from where it has been bought? Who is offering something? Uh, who is offering what in terms of market analysis? What is the total cost associated with the uh, various uh, options to purchase? Uh, who can we buy? Who will be our supplier? Uh, we take into consideration things like uh, demand and supply, uh, risk and cost, benefits and cost. And we can think of how to buy. Do we go direct negotiation? Do we go tendering? Do we go one supplier? Do we go many suppliers? Do we have short-term contract? Should we go for long-term contracts? All these are aspects that you need to consider when you're changing your specification. Because whenever you change anything in your specification, that will lead to newer development, newer outcome. Now, is it worthwhile to do that change if I'm not getting the benefit. So that sets the consideration in modified rebuy. 
if you find that it doesn't make sense to modify the specification, you want to go back to the old specification. New purchases are where the most business case analysis is performed. Because first, you are likely to invest in a lot of money. You're likely to invest a lot of money. You know, if you're buying an equipment, it can cost a few million dollars. You have not bought in the past. So you have nothing to fall back on. Or even if you have bought in the past, it has been many years ago. Right? Many years ago. So your procurement skills are most tested in new purchases. And for new purchases, again, you cannot be the so-called decision maker. You have a lot of people who will be involved in the making of the taking of that decision. So there's a cross-functional team, uh, so-called approach to buying new uh, purchases. New purchases are generally for, uh, mainly for capital, but can also be introducing a new product line and so on. So what should purchasing be doing here? What can you, I'm not sure about Nostro account. Can you maybe, can you help with that? What is Nostro account? Rashidul is asking a question about Nostro account. Uh, can you can you please explain on that? What is that Nostro account? Otherwise, I'll have to look up on that. Uh, I have no. That's why I said I have no idea about Nostro account myself. So maybe uh, next week. If I can do some work research, I have not come across this uh, at least in my experience. But it, there might be something like that. I do not know. Yeah, maybe uh, Aranga says uh, something to do with foreign currency bank account. Maybe, maybe not. That's why I said. Uh, I have no idea. I'll have to do some work research on that. I'll maybe get back to you next week on this. Right. CFT is cross-functional team. All right. Uh, whenever we talk about CFT, uh, involve other functions. So it's a cross-functional team. So in, in a procurement decision for new equipment, you will want to take uh, in your team, people from sales and marketing, people from operation, people from engineering, uh, to come together to see whether we should be going for this equipment or the other equipment or the third equipment. So when, when we are buying new equipment, new product or, or launching a new product line or new product range, if I'm a retail organization, let's say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grocery store. Now I want to launch a new product range, maybe organic food range, whatever, which we have not done before. That's a new purchase. Right, that's a new purchase. So I, from a procurement perspective, I have to understand the business requirement. Remember, whenever I launch something, whenever I have options to consider, I have to look at the business requirement. If I choose option A, what is the impact on my return on investment? If I choose option B, what is the impact on return on investment? If I choose option C, what is the return on investment? Will it increase sales? Will it reduce cost? Will it simplify processes? All that will result in return on investment. And if an option, among all the options, you're going to choose an option that's going to give you the highest return on investment. Right. And that's the key. That's the, that's the framework for business case analysis or business case uh, uh, approach. New purchase can be, yeah, project project item will be new. Generally, project procurement will be a new item if it's a new project. But if you're having building project, maybe you have done it in the past. You so Certain items or most of the item could also be straight rebuy or modified rebuy. <clears throat> but yeah, project, especially project related purchase, project procurement would generally have a lot of new purchases. Not necessarily fixed equipment, but also product. Fixed asset, but also other things. 
researching uh, key suppliers and their capability, high level of effort and involvement of procurement, uh, market research, supplier appraisal, pre-qualification, uh, tendering, negotiations, supply selection. It'll be a lot of uh, effort put into it. Right. And it will be cross-functional effort. Uh, buyer skill and knowledge are critical success factor. Remember, if, if in most organization, what happens typically is buyer gets uh, so-called uh, restricted to straight rebuy or modified rebuy. The new purchase is generally led by the financial function the chief finance officer or finance manager, they become the so-called leader for lead, playing the lead role for, uh, for new purchase. And procurement plays up the administrative role because procurement may not have the necessary skill to do business case analysis. They may not know how to do costing. They may not know how to do investment appraisal. So those are the financial accounting skills. So generally for new purchases, the financial guys get involved and take the lead and procurement gets relegated to more administrative role. But if, if the buyer has the knowledge of as good as the financial officer, finance officer, finance manager, then he, in my opinion, he needs to have that skill to take the lead. If the, if the CFO can do uh, what, uh, for example, investment appraisal, why not the CPO if he has the skill? So skills are very important. Technical skill, financial skill uh, of the buyer. Whenever you're buying something new, remember cross-functional team is required. Why am I, let's say I'm a retail organization, a grocery store, a supermarket. I want to launch a particular product. The marketing will have to tell me what are the requirements of the customer because this, my specification or attributes of the product and service, that input will come from marketing. Engineering will help me to ensure that the item meets all the technical requirements. Manufacturing will tell me whether this item can be made economically. Finance will tell me all aspects related to cost. So by and large, by default, whenever in something new is purchased like capital equipment, like new product range uh, or service range, it's always a cross-functional activity, a cross-functional decision because different function will bring to that uh, decision-making different skills, different competencies. Because remember, once you commit to the purchase, it's a high value purchase. It's a high risk decision. And one month later, the marketing says, oh, no, 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 no. We didn't want to buy this. No, what did you buy? You didn't even consider my inputs. How do you know what the customer wants? Then you are in trouble. So mission of any organization will determine its business requirement. So if I'm a for-profit company, my objective is to increase profit. If I'm a public sector company, my objective will be to reduce cost. Now, whether you increase profit or reduce cost, the implication for procurement is that I need to source. And how, how do I go about sourcing that will determine whether I'm able to increase profit or reduce cost? Focusing on the business needs, depending on the type of organization, becomes a very important uh, so-called alignment for a procurement person. And generally, normally, if you look at procurement, they are more likely to align with the operational requirement, which is good, but not enough. Which is good, but not enough. But you have to also align yourself to the business needs. At the, at the end of it, if there is no business, there is no operation. Okay. One way to identify business need is to come up with certain guidelines, right? And one of the guidelines used is called RAQSCR, R-A-Q-S-C-R. 
how do I know what are the requirements, right? Business, uh, business needs for any organization. At the end of it, I have to make sure that my business meets all the regulatory and legal requirements, right? Otherwise, there will be uh, issues of non-compliance and some uh, maybe charges against the company for doing something that is illegal. <clears throat> So regulatory aspects, I have to have an understanding. Availability, I have to ensure that my supply, can, uh, it covers the continuity of supply of product and service over the duration of that particular contract. If I decide to buy this item over a duration of period, I should have the assurance that this will be available over the duration of the period. Quality. RAQSA quality pertaining to consistency, fitness for use, reliability of the goods and services. And this is this is more not repeatability but reliability. So please make that change. Reliability. Service requirements. Uh, factors that, uh, that cover aspect that how service on to the way services are rendered, flexibility, availability, support, after sales support, and the training, and the training on certain aspects of uh, usage of the equipment, cost. Cost always comes towards the end because you cannot focus on cost till you identify the RAQS on top regulatory. But whatever you purchase has to meet the regulatory requirement. Whatever you purchase, you have to ensure that it is available over the duration of the contract. It meets the quality requirement. It meets the after sales service requirement. Then you look at cost and your objective is to reduce the cost, the total cost of ownership, the total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership, also called the whole life cycle costing or life cycle costing. It is price that you pay for the purchase plus the acquisition cost. And since we are talking about equipment here, you may have installation, you may have commissioning, you may have operational operation cost, you may have maintenance cost, spares, maintenance costs, including spares, plus decommissioning, and then de decommissioning and disposal cost. That is the total cost of ownership. And your objective is to reduce the total cost of ownership by focusing on all these aspects. M7 module talks about whole life cycle costing. So we'll, we'll discuss it. And finally, Whenever you procure anything, total cost of ownership, remember total cost of ownership refers, if I'm buying an equipment, I pay for the price of the equipment, right? That's the purchase price. There is the acquisition cost, this, all the sourcing, writing the specification, doing market research, coming out with the tender document, shortlisting suppliers, inviting code, evaluating code, negotiation, placement of contract. This is all the effort that I spend in purchase. So that's the acquisition cost. Now I receive the equipment. The equipment has to be installed. Site preparation, installation, training. Then it has to be commissioned, trial running. Once it is commissioned, accepted, then there is operation cost. I have to incur cost of utilities, consumables, maintenance cost, spares, then disposal at the end of its life. So calculation of all the cost is necessary when I decide on the cost benefit analysis. When I decide on the cost benefit analysis. Decommissioning is at the end of the life of the equipment, the equipment has to be stopped, taken out of service, dismantled and disposed and the site now ready for new installation. So that is decommissioned. I, I 
take out the machine equipment from my regular use. Commission, decommission. Innovation. Remember, whenever you are procuring an equipment or a product that is new, you have to look at innovation. You have to look at new development, new technology, emerging technologies that you can incorporate in your business decision. So regulatory availability, quality, service, and so on. Ruxi, easy to remember by its uh, acronym, Ruxi. Now, this business requirement, consideration of RAQSCI will help you to define the specification, define the evaluation criteria, come out with KPIs, and look at various options. Right, various options. Now, in order to prepare for a business case, or in order to prepare for defining your business requirement, you need to collect. Yeah, of course, uh, site uh, decommissioning also in includes site preparation, right? You need to uh, prepare the site in its original condition in which you used. So when I when I bought an equipment, I prepared the site to install. When I decommission, I have to bring it back to the same position before it was installed. Right. So you have to uh, make good. You have to make good the site. Right. When you are defining the business needs, I have to look at the future requirements of the organization. Remember, operational requirements are straightforward. I know what I need to run my operation. But when I'm looking at business case, I'm looking at future. I'm buying an equipment today that will last me for 10 years, future 10 years. If I'm introducing a new product range, that will give me business in the future. So I have to collect information related to the organization's future needs, not present needs. Present needs are already met by straight rebuy, modified rebuy. No, don't have to worry. All right. I have to categorize all potential stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders who are going to be affected by this decision? If I buy a new equipment, who are likely to be affected? I have to identify the team that will help me to con that will help me to take a decision for purchase of this item, and make sure that I communicate the analysis to the stakeholder to get the buy-in. If if I have to go to my C C CFO or the CEO, say, give me one million dollars. He'll say, on what basis? So I'll have to give him the complete approach. How did I arrive? What are the things that I considered? What are the options that I chose? How did I evaluate the option? And how do I say that option B is the one that I propose? The stakeholders need logic, need data, need proper analysis. Otherwise, for them, it's a risk. You're presenting something to them. They don't understand what you're presenting, then they say, my goodness, how can I approve a million dollars? I don't even understand what you are trying to say. So you have to make sure that there is a stakeholder buy-in and stakeholder will not buy-in if you say, oh, it's my gut feeling that this equipment is good. You have to lay down a proper structure uh, to arrive at a decision. But stakeholders want to reduce the risk associated with decision-making before they give an approval. Otherwise, they will not give approval. 